Good evening, everybody, and welcome. My name is Sabir, and I direct events here at the Strand. Before we launch into a discussion of Sarah Schaefer's hilarious new memoir, Grand, like, oh, apologies for the feedback. That is now done. So uh, I'd like to share a little bit of history about the Strand. The Strand was founded in 1927 by Benjamin Bass over on Fourth Avenue's Book Row. Stretching from Union Square to Astor Place, Book Row gradually dwindled from 48 bookstores and still, after 93 years, the Strand is the sole survivor, now run by third generation owner Nancy Bass Whiting. We want to thank all of you for your support. Without our loyal community of book lovers, authors like Sarah, we wouldn't be here today and we are so appreciative of it. So, Tonight, I am beyond thrilled to have with us Sarah Schaefer to celebrate the release of her hilarious new memoir, Grand. Sarah is a stand-up comedian and writer. She was the co-host of MTV's Nikki and Sarah Live and has written for numerous television shows, including The Fake News with Ted Nelms and the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor. Sarah's solo show, Little White Box, debuted to a sold-out run at the 2017 Edinburgh Fringe Festival and her Comedy Central Stand Up Presents special premiered in 2019. She lives in LA. Joining Sarah in conversation is Naomi Ekperigan. Naomi is an actor, stand-up comedian, and writer who has appeared on True TV, VH1, MTV, FX, and HBO. Her Comedy Central half-hour special premiered October 2016, and you can watch it now on cc.com. Naomi has written for Comedy Central's Broad City, Hulu's Difficult People, and NBC's Great News. In 2017, she was listed as one of the 10 comedians you need to know by Rolling Stone. A regular on the hit podcast, Two Dope Queens, you can watch her on episode four of the Two Dope Queens HBO special on HBO Go and HBO Now. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Sarah and Naomi to the stage. Hi! Oh my god, we're in conversation! We're in conversation! This is huge. This, this is everything amazing. I've ever wanted. <laughs> you look great, honey. You're giving me just like a Martha Stewart hipster moment. We've got spices, <laughs> fruits, you, flowers. Yes, if you could see what was on the other side. <laughs> of this laptop, you would be concerned for my mental well-being. <laughs> it's very messy in here right now. <laughs> Sarah, today is your day. Grand has dropped. Grand yes. is in the bookstores. Ah, look at you. Look at it. How are you feeling, boo? You know, it's good. I'm, um, I was working on this book for so long. I've always dreamed of writing a book. So for it to finally be out is surreal and so exciting. And, but it's different than like, normally I'd put out like an album or a stand-up special, or maybe I was appearing in a show or something. And those things like they come out and immediately everyone consumes it like in the moment mm -hmm. and you get like immediate feedback. This is a little bit of a slower burn people. Yeah. It's a, it, you have to read all that. <laughs> uh, well, Hopefully I'll give you, like <laughs> I'll give you immediate feedback as someone who devoured it this weekend. <laughs> First of all, my sweet, sweet river rat, my sweet, sweet talkie turtle. Okay. I love the book. Oh, you're wearing it. You guys, when you read the book, you will read about Sarah's life-changing whitewater rafting trip in the Grand Canyon. We'll get into it later, but that pin is tender. I need to tell <laughs> you that reading this book, I said, afterwards, it made me want to write and it made me make a consult with a therapist. Honey, you did the Lord's work, okay? That is the highest praise I can give any book. If you make me want to get my life, that is amazing. Good. Well, that's the point, you know? I'm, I'm <laughs> ready to change others. <laughs> um, um, you, you know, you're, you're a comedian. I'm a comedian. We, we, we truck in the world of humor. However, I kind of felt like to me, obviously like there are moments of humor and levity, but there were times when this book got really real, a oh, yeah. little more real than maybe I expected, you know? <laughs> like um, maybe more real than I was ready for. No, I'm into yeah. it, I want it, but yeah. it was certainly so much about you that obviously I'd never even heard in your comedy, right? So yeah. 
<clears throat> but, but also too, you talk about in this book a lot about the identity that is wrapped up in being a funny person. Yeah. So I was just like wondering, you know, when you kind of sat down to write this, were you scared at all to get into some of this stuff? You know, given that up um, until this point, you know, you made your career in the jokes and the make ups Scared is um, not a strong enough <laughs> to describe the terror that I felt going into mm. this. I knew I wanted to do it. I knew I had stories I wanted to share. I didn't know how I was going to do it as, uh, as someone who ha I keep certain parts of my life private. I, you know, we go on stage and we tell stories and I've done podcasts and I've been very much an open book, mm -hmm. but there's just certain parts, you know, it's, there's things I've never shared publicly before. And um, some of it was like, I'm very much someone who likes to protect the privacy of the people I love. Mm -hmm. And so I won't share certain stories because I'm not, um, a, and I enjoy it when other comedians do it, <laughs> but when they're like, here's everything you need to know about my mom around right. um, the <laughs> and they just go bananas with it. And mm -hmm. I have never been that way. Um, but my story and the stories I wanted to tell involved other people because <laughs> yeah. I am yeah. not alone. Thank yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how life um, works, apparently. So I had to like take steps to, you know, talk to my family, talk to um friends and just you know everybody in my life about you know not that i needed their permission but i love my family so much i wouldn't have done this if i didn't if i felt like this was going to harm them right um and i you know you can't control the reaction but you know if they were like i will die i will never speak to you again if you do this i wasn't going to do it right so um, I'm really, really grateful. I know that some of them are watching this. Right now. <laughs> very grateful to them for for trusting me to tell, you know, part of our story. I, mean, I would never be able to tell all of it. I don't have that. Would have been hell because uh, it would have been like eight thousand of, of these. To I would have read, dude. I would have read it all though. I want. There's so oh. many more. Quite, which is great. You know that feeling yeah. of being like. There's so much more here. I mean, yeah. was there ever a conversation for you when you were sitting down to write? Was there a concerted decision that was like, this is a memoir as opposed to essays or something like that? And right. what, if any kind of, you know, decision was that? Well, I, I pitched it as a book of essays, like, okay. and it had a very loose theme, like, you know, some of the themes in the book are about me having very black and white thinking, like, I'm all good or I'm all bad and very, having like moral anxiety and um being obsessed with that and um so i was like it's a book about that and then once we started talking about the stories that i had to tell they were like this is like a memoir you have a memoir here and i was like oh, <laughs> oh i must be really special like my, i must be such a good writer like in my head i was like oh a memoir is, is more sophisticated yes i had no idea what i was getting myself into <laughs> It really was so much harder because <laughs> in memoir you have to like tell a story and like yes. it has to read it has to read like a novel yeah you know you have to yeah. like like my first draft was a, a disaster i mean it really was really? a mess and i got my first round of notes back um i don't even know if i'm really supposed to talk about this stuff but i'm going to anyway you must we need it i mean we're in a pandemic keep it real right we've got 32 people here who are 34 34 it's coming up it's got bumping up the word <laughs> is spreading people are making it like you got to check it it's <laughs> um so uh the first round of notes were really brutal and honest but they were like you know hey you need to tell a story here you need to have dialogue you need to have scenes and you know the way a book reads and i was like huh <laughs> like <laughs> can't just Oh, because I was like writing things to me like, and then you get it. Like a bunch of stuff happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> I wasn't going deep enough and mm -hmm. um, I was really depressed about it. And then right, like the next week is when I went on the Grand Canyon trip with my Well, this brings me to my next one. Look at yeah. you segueing me, queen. Like yeah. how, you know, how soon after the rafting trip did you decide, okay, this is going to be part of it? Because that rafting trip... For you guys, you know, who are about to read it, it is a through line. It grounds us. It brings us back. It takes us on a true journey. 
into the heart of Sarah and the world. Now, <laughs> when were you like on the trip? It's funny because when I ever think about my life, meeting my upbringing, I, re- I think I'm like, I don't remember anything. Like, I don't remember details. You know, I'm like, I don't have enough notes. Like, when you were in the Grand Canyon, were you keeping a journal? Were you sitting here being like, I know I want to use this. I know no. this is okay. No, I went into the Grand Canyon truly numb. <laughs> I was like, what, what am I doing? Like I was yeah. so busy that year and traveling so much, you know, I traveled so much that year touring that I just wouldn't think about the next trip until it was time. Right. And so we're, we're about to go on this trip. And this is like in the first chapter. And like my sister Ross is saying things like, can you believe we're about to raft down 228 miles of Colorado <laughs> river? And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I, I just didn't think it through. I wasn't like, really tuned into the details and stuff yeah. and um so I was like really scared all of a sudden yeah. and um but I went in there just like this trip had been planned you have to book these far in advance I had planned it pretty far in advance I had no idea that it was going to be uh part of this book or the mm. not even part but like the main stuff right. <laughs> so while I was down there I took a couple like I kept a little journal because I, when you go on a big trip like that and you know it's going to be memorable, I'm mm-hmm. usually someone who will keep a journal just because. Yeah. Um, and I didn't think anything about putting it in the book until like a month later. And I was like, God, I got to work on this book. <laughs> and I was dreading it because I was felt like I didn't know how to, how to tell my story, how to fix it, um, how to go there and all that. And I was like, well, what if... I wrote about the Grand Canyon and I just started thinking more and more about it. And I was like, cause there was just so much, I just got so much out of that journey. Um, mm-hmm. that was like so much metaphor and, and it related so much to my life and my story that, um, it all just started to meld together in my brain. And I was like, I think this might work. And I pitched it back to my editor and she was like, give it a try. And yeah. it really, it took a lot of work to get it to work. Mm-hmm. But I feel really good about how it turned it out. It worked. It worked. Hendy, it worked. I felt <laughs> like, I felt like, you know, kind of with each story about the past for me, I'm going to get poetic, honey. That was my submerge. I was being submerged. Okay, I was in the water. And then I would kind of come up for air into present Sarah via the Grand Canyon. You know what I mean? Um, so many questions that. about the characters. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm so concerned about Bob and where he is now. <laughs> Um, <laughs> there is a man named Bob in this book that just makes you, you might want to throw the book across the room, but it's only because it's Bob. It's not because it's the book. Yeah, Bob, I'm Bob, <laughs> you know, and I, but I did change a lot of the names, Bob being one of them, yeah. um, or Bob. Um, but no, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, there was, my sister and I went on this trip with 18, it was 18 total passengers and four guides. Yes, and sick. sick. I, you know, I don't like nature. I was terrified. Every step of the way, <laughs> terrified. There was like 16 total strangers uh, on this boat, on these two boats. We went on two boats. And um, it was, it was um, you know, everybody got along fine, you know, and they were talking, the guys would talk about how sometimes when there's a bunch of different people, like it, there was no big group. There was one family of four. Mm-hmm. Uh, but everybody else was either a loner or... Uh, a a couple Mm -hmm. and um so you know they were like sometimes the group bonds right away sometimes it takes towards the end of the trip ours was more like a slow burn Mm -hmm. but we made friends with people on our boat people i'm still friends with now and oh really um and it was just you'll never forget like being stuck because you you can't look at your phone because there's no signal I mean, you yeah. can look at your phone, but you got to look, look through your, the, the albums, you know, right. <laughs> um, and you can like, but there's no signal and uh, you really are out there and, you know, you're working together as a group uh, to load and unload and, and just experiencing this whole thing together. Except for that one useless family who didn't <laughs> unload their shit. I mean, honestly, when you, like, whatever, I was like, uh-uh. I was like, uh-uh. I'm so mad at them. Like, I thought they were the worst. Like, worse than Bob yeah. in a way. Because in a way, yeah. I mean, it was, like, it was like every, passive aggressive in a way. Everybody came down there with their shit, you know? <laughs> and it was very clear early on, like, who were the people that Ross and I were like, oh, we're gonna, 
we're going to clash with these people. Yeah. And yeah. Of, there, so if you, if you haven't read the book yet, there's, there's a family of four where the, the husband and wife, it, it was very clear early on that the wife had no idea. What she was <laughs> going to do. Right. She was like, what is this? I'm not interested in this. Like she was yeah. kind of outing the whole trip. She and, was like you, but like didn't hear the part about the rapids, right? Like it wasn't oh, until the day before that she was like, wait, what are we doing? Well, she didn't hear the part about it being uh, outdoors. <laughs> 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 she was like, no. And mm. the husband was just, and so they were just, they didn't really help with a lot and they were kept to themselves. I think they were just going through some stuff, but it, yeah. was, <laughs> it was just easy to make fun of him because he never changed his outfit the whole trip. <laughs> And we called him Spandad because it was head to toe spandex. This is, I think that's why he booked the trip. He was like, where can I be myself? Where can I wear the spandex I desire? Yeah. Head to toe. They, but, live in, they live in Europe. Oh, okay. so I feel They're not European, but they lived, they lived in another country. And so I feel safe yeah. trashing them right no, now. No, you can. I think, I think you're right. I think you can definitely safely do that. Um, <laughs> what question about rafting, you know, this eight day trip? Are you ever, do you ever feel clean? Because you know, as you say, you kind of like wash in the minerally water of the canyon. Yeah, you don't feel clean ever. Um, you, you get, the water is so cold though. It's like yeah. truly 55 degrees is very cold. Like you can only yeah. be in it for a little while before you start to go numb. Like it's, it's not good. Um, right. So you go in the, the river and the river it's a raging river it's the yeah. colorado river so you can only go in a little bit and you know like you know waist deep and you're you're you bring out your your biodegradable soap yeah you know yep. and your clothes because you're in front of everyone so you don't really want to get naked i mean i maybe some what Sarah, I don't <laughs> like it i don't like it <laughs> so you they didn't, those four guys didn't have like a makeshift like shower curtain system like put up a a sheet between two branches or some shit. could have. I mean, I'm sure there's people that like do <laughs> make it on these trips, but we were like, look, you're washing, you know, in your sports bra, you're washing over your yeah. clothes. You're in, uh, and uh, you're definitely getting in to your, your nether regions. <laughs> water. You're like scrubbing yeah. down there. Knowing <laughs> it's just dirt water. All yeah. The water's brown. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy, and then you have to dunk. You yeah. know, and going under was really, whew. But yeah, my hair was like disgusting by the end of it. It truly right. was I, made of straw. Harrowing, harrowing. <laughs> the entire journey was harrowing to me. Now, <laughs> another thing though, harrowing, you know, because I recently, you know, you and I talked on my podcast and I was saying how you would always seem like a cool customer to me because you, um, you don't wear your neuroses basically outside. At least not like, right? Well, at least that's what I thought. However, honey, <laughs> we got into this book. And it was like, and I was like, oh my God, she's one of us. Yeah. I saw just how deeply, you know, the fear yeah. went. And I guess, you know, you talk a lot about being a good girl, you know. Um, and as you said earlier, this moral anxiety you sort of dealt with. But then also, as you said, Sue, this book was about putting yourself out there and putting your personal stuff out there. You know, how... How did you kind of manage some of that, I've got to be a good girl, meaning both good to the people I love and also come off good. How yeah. do you kind of reconcile that with telling the truth of your experiences? Oh, wow. That was the hardest part of it. Um, and and um, it was so, so, it still is scary. Like I'm scared of the unknowns of, you know, someone reading this and getting mad or like mm -hmm. reacting negatively or, or saying something mean to someone I love, you know, or yeah. any of that. Um, but um, having to kind of realize that I am someone who likes to tell stories and I do that in different ways. Um, this is the first time I've done it this way and I like to speak the truth and be honest. Mm -hmm and be entertaining and funny and it's valid like that's valid it's not yes. selfish yes. to um want to share your story because i've heard a quote like um I, I'm, I'm gonna get it wrong but it's something like when you tell your truth you know you set free 
a, th- a, a thousand other chains are broken, you know, for other mm-hmm. people. Because well, they don't- yes, honey, I called a therapist. You broke my chains. <laughs> you don't feel alone, you know? And yes. You, don't, you know, um, and, but, you know, it's a, it, it's a, it's a process. It's not, that's why the book, it ends the way it does without giving mm-hmm. it away. It's, you know, I'm a work in progress. I'm, it's never over mm-hmm. until, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you're going to go too, right? Just yeah. like that. Um, <laughs> but, um, but knowing that, you know, obviously there's also this part of the relationship with your editor and as you submit these things and you know, how you said the first, you said the first iteration of this, you know, you didn't go down deep. It wasn't deeper. Yeah. You were drilling yeah. down deep. Um, yeah. When you say that, like, do you think that was about not drilling down deeply internally, or do you think it was just straight up like not writing details? It was both, you know, um, because the details were, they weren't things I wasn't able to face, you know, because I could like talk about my own life with people in my world for hours and for too long. Um, <laughs> But it wasn't like I had uncovered memories, although I did did uncover memories in researching myself and my life. Yeah. I, I discovered things that I was like, oh, my memory was off on that. Or mm-hmm. what I thought had happened is not real. Yeah. Like I had, I had this little story that ended up getting cut and I went back um, and looked at a video of it. There's video of the incident. I was like mm-hmm. in, you know, I was like 10 or something. 11 maybe and it's not at all what I remembered really like my (laughs) it was like a little fashion show that I was in at the local department store and I thought I was moping but I'm not I'm like like, (laughs) you know and I was like oh then my memory but but that's maybe what I felt inside yes you felt (laughs) yeah indication of being a performer early on yes definitely put the mask on um but (laughs) But yeah, no, it was uh, definitely like I, uh, in the first draft, maybe even in some of the second draft, I was really like, you know, afraid to say certain things. So I was trying to like summarize or hide. And, you know, there's, if you read this book, you will, there are parts where you're like, okay, she obviously doesn't want to talk about this or that. (laughs) and She's not giving it to us. And I'm so sorry. Um, (laughs) But, um, I wanted all those choices to be very clear creatively and not yes. just out of fear, but right. that it made sense for the book, you know? Right. And that was a, a uh, I had a lot of people I, I talked to that have written books, my editor um, and, you know, a lot of trusted allies in this, in this <laughs> process that helped me nudge me, my family nudge me there and hold my hand a little bit um, and help me like in the, like in the Grand Canyon, <laughs> off the cliff, you know? Oh um, my God, my nightmare, terrified, terrified of jumping. Um, <laughs> you know, you are so close to your family, as you said, I've already, I see Ross, I think it's Ross coming through in the Zoom chat, <laughs> yeah. so I think that's Ross of Ross. Um, you guys are so close, and that's like, oh, so tender, and there's a story you tell, you know, where, you know, you have this moment where someone tries to, tries to get in the way of a Schaefer clan. You know, tries to wedge, and the Shaver clam was like, "No, we got your back." And I was like, "That is so beautiful." Yeah. And, but this moment, you know, and you know, you said, you know, like kind of wanting to make sure they were okay with the writing. You know, as you said about kind of drilling down, uncovering memories. Were there any stories or moments um, in the book, or didn't make it in the final book, where, for instance, your memory differed from Christie's or Ross's or Jay's, and you kind of end up finding out? We grew up together, but we have totally different oh, memory yeah. of that thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was, <laughs> I would text someone and be like, do you remember, was it this or that? And, they, and then they would just have a totally different, they'd be like, no, that actually happened like in a different year or we were, you know, like, and it was like uh, some conversations like that. It was like, whoa, uh, <laughs> memories of something. There was one story I talk about where my parents got up in the book where my parents got up in front of our church and and like gave a talk uh mm-hmm. yes they, talk. they spoke they spoke yep. to the church <laughs> they spoke and to um church. no one remembers it like, <laughs> like i don't remember but i we know it happened we all know yeah. it happened 
my dad doesn't really remember like nobody we've all blocked it out because <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it was a very traumatic it was very stressful yeah. and yeah. I thought I was the only one so I was like you know and that was an example of something that we talked about you know my editor about like she was like I want to know more about that I'm like but I don't remember it so I shouldn't lie and I was like maybe right. I you know no, uh, it's, there's no rules in memoir but one of the things people were saying is like don't speak for other people's minds you know don't say she was thinking this you know she must have been thinking well i'm not you so i don't know what you thought um but you can there's ways you can write about when you're guessing if i had to guess you know mm -hmm. this yeah. this happened and so i worked on different ways of guessing what happened and um ultimately i asked my family to help fill my memory in so maybe i could do that yeah. and they were like i don't remember anything <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's so your funny. brain takes care of you yes definitely Some, your yeah. brain will cocoon your brain will definitely build a cocoon <laughs> um, <laughs> but um you know your mother can we just talk about billy can we yeah. talk about billy honey before we open it to q a because yeah. billy's a queen mm -hmm. Billy, I want the, I mean, you know, um, your mother started a thrift store, basically. Mm -hmm. She went from just handing out some goods to getting the brick and mortar and just yeah. helping the community. My God. Um, yeah. You know, how quickly, like, you know, your mother's passing with the writing of this book. How close were those two things together? How much was, you know, some of that... Um, part of the coping, part of the dealing, yeah. the unpacking, if you will. Well, you know, um, she died in 2007 and I started working on this book in 2017. So 10 years later, but that year prior, I had started for the first time talking about her on stage. That's yes. <laughs> that's what I was remembering. Um, and not really her in particular, but I had started talking about, um, like, things that had happened when around the time she died. And some of that is in the book a little bit. I touch mm -hmm. on it a little bit. Um, and I, that was the first time I'd done that. It felt really good. Um, but I've always wanted to share more of her with the world because it feels like a way to keep her alive and her memory alive. And, and because she was just so incredible. And um, to be able to share that with with people and to get to know her in in my memory you know my siblings and my father they would have they would write a different book about her mm. with some some intersecting you know yeah. um traits and stories and stuff um but you know it was hard i mean that was like reliving in a way that i didn't think it would be like right. i i would be in a coffee shop just like, <laughs> like, but I just had to get it done. Like I would get there and be like, oh, I gotta work on it, you know. And, just start <laughs> and then like, you know, I was going through old journals. Ross had her journals and very graciously let me take them for a little while and look through them. And that was really difficult. And old boxes of stuff that I was looking through and just stumbling on stuff you didn't want to see. Yeah, like more, you know, unpleasant memory, like unpleasant in that, like, you know, we during while I was writing this book, we packed up the house that we grew up in, um, in, in, in Midlothian. And um, my dad sold that house. And so we had to work together to go through all the stuff. And it, that was a very, I wrote about that for one draft of the book that that incident, yeah. and it ended up not making it in. But um, um in that we packed up some stuff. And then when I was still working on the book, I opened up a box of stuff. Um, and there was like some stuff from right around when she died, mm. like medical stuff, you know, and just seeing that was not, not good. I mean, right. I lost my, I just absolutely lost it. Scott, my husband came in, well, he's my boyfriend at the time. Um, he came in, he came in and thought something had happened, that right. someone had died. And I'm like, yeah, someone did die. Yep. 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 <laughs> Someone did die and I'm reliving it right now. And it was yeah. really rough. I mean, you know, and um that was really, really, really hard. And um, but it did 
it was helpful. And now I get to share her. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And maybe more, write more about her. I don't know if this opens up. If you, you must, know. you must, you <laughs> must write more about her, talk more about her on stage. Because, you know, what I also get is a sense of, you know, you have this anxiety as a growing up about being the good girl. Um, and at the same time, it seems to me like you did, you grew up living a life of service, right? With your involvement in church yeah. and your mother's work, you know, you didn't, it seemed like that was it. Meaning like, that's yeah. the way you knew how to live. That's the way you knew what to do. Yeah. I mean, she taught us a lot about how to do that, about how to serve and how to, I mean, I've thought about it a lot actually this year um, with the, I've, you know, I've I call it the uprising, yes, yes. <laughs> the George Floyd post. I call it the Caucasian awakening, but yes, <laughs> that's what I call it, but uh -huh, I understand. <laughs> and I, you know what, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we, you know, but, you know, I didn't go into it in the book. That was a conscious choice. I, you know, thought yeah. about it a lot, you know, because yeah. we were white growing up in the South and, you know, my dad, um, without giving away too much in the book, you know, it's like um, our privilege played a part in our story, no doubt. And But my mom and my dad, they taught us how to change, mm -hmm. how to, to risk it all, you know, right. to, to not to do what's right, to make things right and to repair damage right. that has been done. And uh, and then my mom being in a life of service after that point, I think um, taught, it just opened up our whole world, you know, of not fearing different people, not judging people for having a different circumstance than you. Right. And being grateful for that, <clears throat> you know. Yeah. Um, and that was, my mom was very religious. She was very, um, but she was truly like, to me, in my eyes, she was the purest form of like Christ-like, you know, like let me serve you, you know, mm -hmm. you are, you are him. He saw mm -hmm. Jesus in you. I mean, right. she thought, she saw Jesus in He's everyone in you. she met, yep. mm -hmm. you know, so that was how she approached things. And it was, it does, when you grow up around that, you do approach things differently. And, you know, but I'm still very selfish. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're a stand-up comedian. You know what I mean? You still fight you fed away. You fed away. I've embraced it now. I have both parts of me. And that's right, exactly. It's about integration. Okay. It's about integration. <laughs> um, you, you know, again, we don't want to give too much of the book away because it's like you guys are gonna get your copy in the mail, you're gonna devour it, no spoilers. But you know, I'm you mentioned sure everyone in here has already read the book because it's family <laughs> and friends. Let's be honest. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. Did they finish? Did they finish? Eh? It takes time. You Books know, are hard. reading Books is hard. Are hard. Re okay, literally, I was, you know, when we had talked, talked about doing this, and then I was like, wait, I have to read the book. And then I was like, <laughs> when have I read a book in its entirety? Sorry, Strand. Love you deeply. No, you're sponsoring. But I realized, not in a good way, no, I love books. Like, I was a reader growing up. I just realized in this last, in the pandemic, in these last five months, I was like, I haven't picked up a book as much as I should have, you know, given that I'm in the house all the time. So it was um, just really great. It was just really great for you to like remind me to read. Again, so much, so many bonds <laughs> broken, so many chains. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not a big reader myself either. You know, <laughs> I, read, I read more now that I've read, I, I read a lot of books in preparation for writing this book and just to see what other people were writing. And, um, <laughs> and I, uh, I was always more of a writer. That's who yeah. I am. You know, and yeah. I was an English major and I would never finish the book. <laughs> I, I was an English figure, major too. I would figure out how to write the essay based on what I had read. <laughs> so full of shit. Ah, and now here you are published. And I bet the other English majors can't say that, girl. No, so. you guys read, I write. I do <laughs> write. You do the reading, stay in your stay lane. Stay in your lane. Um, <laughs> well, you talked about certain things, you know, you've mentioned a couple times like, oh, this didn't make it in, this didn't make it in. Can you like give us a little juicy moment, like a story that did not make it in the book that, you know, had to, that you wish you could have kept in, but you couldn't? Mm. You got a little juice, a little tidbit? A little murder, no. Um, <laughs> 
It was this murder one time. No. Um, <laughs> you know, let me think. Um, none of it was juicy. I mean, uh-huh. look. I mean, an absolute depth. I mean, like, I made a very conscious choice to not really talk in detail about my marriage. Uh-huh. Um, but I did talk about the divorce. That was really, that was really the scary, some of the scariest. Stuff. I wanted to ask, but then I also was like, is she allowed to even talk about it? Because, you know, yeah. you do talk about how this person didn't want you to talk about them. Yes. But you also yeah. had to tell your story, for instance. And so. Yeah. I feel really good about the way I did it. Um, yeah. Um, I still have some little rumbles um, of fear around it, but, um, you know, there was stuff, I mean, that whole time in my life, you know, uh, right after I got divorced was really wild. I mean, I could have included a lot of stuff in there, but. um, (laughs) (laughs) New York City, newly single. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I did not do that. But yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, there's a lot of juicy stuff I didn't include in the book. (laughs) Maybe when I'm way older, I'll include yeah. things. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I can't think of anything that I cut that was like, yeah. uh, cause the juicy yeah. stuff is the stuff they want. Right, 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 right. I mean, look, no, I, I'm not implying there's an any, honey, it's juicy. It's juicy, yeah. so much in there already. But I just, you know, again, it's so interesting. You know, you are relatively young, but so much has happened and what it is to take stock of your life in such a public and professional yeah. way. You know, I can only imagine what it would be to kind of say, that's, no, nah, that story isn't memoir. You know, like, it's not it for this. I mean, there were things that I was like, I love this. And I would keep trying to, like, shove it in. And she, yeah. she the editor would be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they were mainly stories from, gro- there were so many stories from growing up mm-hmm. that I couldn't include because I was covering this whole, like, it was just sort of a snapshot of my life. Yeah. Um, I wanted to show people how I got from point A to getting on that raft. Yes. That's the journey of the book. Yeah. Um, on the uh, submerged. You know, submerged. It's, submerged. I'm submerged. Yeah. Um, but you know that, yeah, there was so much stuff from my childhood that, and, and teen years and, you know, stuff about, oh, here's one I'll give you. <laughs> oh, I know it's almost time to do our Q and A, but oh, yeah. we do this. We ended up cutting it because it was just too much, uh, too long. But when my mom started in, in, she starts a thrift store, she starts a charity called Pennies for Heaven. And um, when she started that, there was like a woman in our community who was like threatened, who <laughs> felt competitive with oh my, my mom. God. Yeah. Someone who ran a, a different charity uh-huh. <laughs> was like mad at my mom for like stealing her thunder or like, <laughs> You know, th- my mom was the new, like, <laughs> white yeah. senior on the scene. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, yeah, I know. She, and, and the, we would joke about it constantly because in a, one of their, they had a fight. They had a blowout about it. And in that, in that fight, she accused my mom of, like, having nefarious motivations for her charity and that accused my mom of maybe maybe not being above board and so she goes so it was pennies for heaven was the name of the charity but she goes yeah. you should change it to dollars for billy oh dollars for billy <laughs> so we would just joke about it she would be like she'd like you know when she would be like folding some gross, throwing away something gross from the thrift store, like something yeah. very, like dollars for Billy, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my joke. God. I'm obsessed with her. That's very, as you say, swanty, you know, the description. Swanty. The idea that you would really be um, like, what is she mad? Like you're getting all the, like your mom's getting the good do- donations or something. Yeah, it you was know? like that. I mean, I mean, I think there was more to it, but like right. it was, dim- from my point of view at the time, I was like, why is she jealous of mom for helping more people? Right. Not in, right. Why can't they just work together? You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Sarah, are you ready to answer some cues from our I friends, to, our yes. participant friends? Um, you know, they really came in, you know, it's great because you know, sometimes you start a and a and then no one has anything to like ask. They're like afraid to ask. No, not this time, honey. Coming in hot. And I love it. Let's start with someone anonymous because I love the drama. 
What choices did you make to balance out the seriousness of the story with the jokes in your writing? The, mm. um, how do you know, the jokes and funny parts give a lot of dimension to the story. There's a question mark there, but I don't think it's a question. I think there's a statement. Mm. The jokes and the funny parts give a lot of dimension to the story. So yeah, that balance. Well, you know what, what, what has been great about this book is that the, that balance is really who I am. Mm -hmm. And it, I like the salty and the sweet. Uh, and that's how it's the kind of stuff I like to consume. It's the kind of way I am in conversation. Um, and on stage, I've felt so much pressure to be, I mean, it's a very American thing I've learned. <laughs> be funny every second or we will kill you. You have to yes. have laughs per, per minute. And, you know, uh, you're, if you're not getting laughs at every second, you're in trouble. You know, yep. you're not a real comedian. And so for many years, I, I was obsessed with make sure I'm funny, make sure I'm funny yeah. at all times. Yeah. Yeah. And doing the Edinburgh Fringe Festival taught me that it's okay to tell a story and to be mm -hmm. serious sometimes and to take people on a journey, create tension and then break it. Yeah. Um, and so I, I kind of relaxed into, I think, truly more who I am as a storyteller with this book. This is, this yeah. is the kind of book I wanted to write. I did not want right. to write like joke, jokey, joke, joke, you know, yep. how to be a boss bitch. Like I didn't want to... <laughs> Nothing against those books, but that's just not what I wanted to do. And so I was allowed, thank God, I was allowed, someone, someone got that from my book proposal. They could tell I was that yeah, Okay. And they, they let me fly. That's so, wonderful. Lauren oh at, uh, Simon & Schuster at, at Gallery Books did that for me. Oh God, I love. Um, Reese asks, um, do you have any advice in terms of, you know, again, we're talking about the salty, the sweet. Do you have any advice in terms of how to make the leap into exploring your own pain through art? Maybe that's too pretentious a way to ask it. How about this? What has to change within a person in order for your own struggle to become a story or a song or a joke or a memoir? Ah. Um, this is I Reese Witherspoon, I'm sure. Do you know Reese, what I mean? Thank you for, for writing. For coming it. in, yeah. Uh, she's a huge fan of mine. Um, <laughs> she, uh, no. Um, I would say, um, I think it takes practice. It's a practice. It's like, a. it's, you start small, you know, and try something short and sweet and share it with the world and see how that feels. Because if you go too far too quick, it can be, especially nowadays with, with social media and like the way we share our work yeah. can distort it a lot. And, yeah. uh, so something you wrote can be turned in and taken out of context and twisted and um, people are often running with it before you can explain. And so I would say, but for me, what it takes for pain to become art is time. I mean, truly, yeah. like, some people go straight to it. Lori right. Kilmartin, for instance. Right, yes. Lori Kilmartin is writing jokes about her mom dying of COVID as her mom is dying of COVID. It's brilliant. Right. right. She's amazing in what she does. I'm more someone who's like 10 years later, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I should talk about this on stage. Like, um, it has to simmer for a long time with me. Yeah. But for, to, for me, because I think an audience can feel it if you're really not okay. Yes. And yes. If you, this is specifically about comedy. If you mm -hmm. want your audience to laugh about something, you really have to be able to laugh about it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're gonna feel that and go, oh, oh, you're yeah. someone's, someone's upset. Someone's <laughs> hurting, right? It's yeah. like I'm hurting. I didn't come here to watch you hurt. Yeah. It's like, you know what I mean? Like they need someone to be in charge. I mean, I also feel like as you say, it's time. It's also like for me, part of that time is a time it will take sometimes to be able to make fun of myself, because I think that in order to tell the story in a way that's compelling, it has to be a little less. Look at how everyone hurt me. You yeah. know, and have some of the dimension. And I can't really make fun of myself right. or even just look at myself critically until I'm on the other side. Yes, if you're so, well, and if you're writing a poem or a song or something like that, you can maybe um, inject the pain a little more directly. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but I think, you know, it's, it's a release. And like, it, you know, I, I was reading a book about how to write memoirs when I first started this. And someone was, the person was like, if you can't think about or write about the thing 
without having a complete nervous breakdown, like sobbing, shaking, and it's so traumatic to even do that, then you're not ready yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I don't know if I 100% agree with that because there were points during this. Where Coffee shop. Coffee shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think if it's like, if you can't even touch it, you might need some more time. But right. sometimes it's good to write something down with no intention of showing it to anyone just to get it out. Right, right. Um, you know, you talked a little bit about Edinburgh and how, you know, it changed the way you, it taught you that, you know, you can take an audience on a journey. Uh, Emma asks, you know, did writing the memoir change how you do stand up? Well, yes, I was working on it while I was doing stand up. And um, once I did my half hour comedy special, I put away a lot of material that was older. Mm-hmm. And um, in the Edinburgh show, and there, I just retired a lot of that material. And as I was working on the book, I was like, ooh, I have a whole new, th- I have all this new stuff to talk about that could be inspired by the book, informed by the book. Um, and I've been put, I put it, I like started working on new stuff last year, late last year, and then the pandemic hit and I'm not doing the zoom shows. Right. Uh, we're on hold yeah. for now. We're on hold. We're on hold. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think we will. I mean, I, I want to do Edinburgh again. Now that I know what, what it is to do yeah. that whole, I want to go, or maybe not even Edinburgh, but I want to write more of a one woman show. I hate mm-hmm. that term because people are like, oh, you're going to be on stage and like <laughs> wiping your period blood on your face. <laughs> In my one woman show, I get nude. <laughs> um, no, I, I want to do like a solo show, like more of a story, more of like a Nanette or what Jacqueline Novak did with um, yeah. Get on Your Get knees. on Your Knees. Yeah. You know, where there's a theme and a story being told. I really want to do something like that. And now is the time to think about it, but. I'm now is the time. <laughs> um, so two two people ask, you know, will you write another book now that you've been through it? Uh, and if so, what about? And I just, first of all, I gotta say, honey, the first one just came out. Let's <laughs> a rest. Give me a second. Um, Give me a second. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. I think it's like, when I was writing it, I was like, I'll never do this again. This is too bad. <laughs> Now I'm like, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, if I have something to write about, and I think I do, but um, I don't know, maybe I write fiction next time, so it's not so fraught. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would definitely write another book. I, I, what I've learned from this is how to be a disciplined writer on a bigger project. I'm uh-huh. no longer afraid of script writing. Yeah. I'm not afraid of anything when it comes to writing now. I'm like, I'll do Ooh. it. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Um, Sophie asks, have all your siblings read the book? You know, I know you said you asked them for permission, but have they read it? Are the reviews in? Yeah, they read it. I sent them. I will never forget the day I, I, I was sitting in, a, in the coffee shop where I usually write. And I was like, I think it's time. I think I need to send it to them and have them read it. And so I sent it to them and my dad. And I was, I was like, wrote this long email, like, please take your time with it, sit with it, ponder, come back to me. Don't, don't hold back. If there's anything <laughs> I want to talk through it, you know, we will get through this. Time. <laughs> trying to prepare them. And then all of them read it within like five hours. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> done. and they, they were so, I mean, I hope they were honest with me, I didn't <laughs> um, but they really liked it. And my, and I, I was, didn't know how burdened I was by the fear mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. their disapproval. Yes. Where that day, I remember it was like, I was flying. It was like, I yeah. had been cured. I was walking down the street. I was like, we're going out to eat today. <laughs> I, I was like, this could be, I could die. I really, I was like, I could die tomorrow and I've done it. Yeah. I've done, I've, yeah. I've done something they're proud of. I'm going to start crying. I love it. You should. You, your book is out today. Your memoir is out today. This is crazy. Um, what Sarah asks, you know, the Grand Canyon trip was the end of a series of solo vacations you took with each of your family members. Mm-hmm. What gave you that idea? And would you recommend others do solo trips with family? 
Ross is in the chat. Ross is in Ross the chat. Ross is in the chat. I don't I think <laughs> others are probably as well. Um, <laughs> no, it was, you know what it was? It was, um, I, I'm not a big birthday person. And I was like, no, but it's 40. I got to do it up. And you know what? It was really about my personal distaste for planning group stuff. Uh -huh. um, and we go on like a vacation every year. Like we sometimes we'll get together for other birthdays and we'll, we'll try to do Christmas stuff as much as we can together. And that kind of stuff stresses me out of like, and I don't want to be the cause of the stress. I hate being thinking I, even though everybody's a cause of stress at some point, you're, <laughs> you, you know, but I don't like thinking, oh, I'm making this stress and they're having to buy tickets and do, we're going to meet up and what's the hotel? And, you know, I just yeah. want to yeah. do it um, like that. And I was like, what if I did a trip with each person and then we can do it on their time. It's just me and them. And honestly, it was selfish. It was like, <laughs> work for me. And I get them all to myself. My mom yeah. used to do that. They, she would do trips. She would take you just on a trip, just you. Some, we, it only like, a, a, like a trip somewhere or like to the grocery store? No, like oh, okay. she took me to Colonial Williamsburg one okay. time, just me, you know, and I just Ooh. felt like I had won the lottery. I was yeah. alone with my mom on a trip. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that was special. So yeah. I, this made me feel like that. Yeah. Um, Cynthia, we've just got five more minutes, um, but I wanted to get in here. Cynthia asks, you know, did you know that you had a book? Like, did you say, self, this is some good shit. It needs to be a book. Or did you start writing and think this is way more than a stand-up act? Cynthia also says, I've obviously been in quarantine and my social skills have dulled. <laughs> I don't think so. But wrong with that question. Cynthia, I got it. I got what you were saying. But um, um no, that yeah, the um um I knew I had a book before I knew I was a comedian. Oh, uh, okay. You know, we talked about growing up, oh, I'm gonna write a book one day. All of this goes in a book. This is great for a book. And then I went on another path. And so this felt like it was something I was always going to try to do. I didn't know what it would be like, um, but yeah. Wow. Let's do them quick. Rapid fire. Get them. Rapid get them. fire. Rapid fire. I think I'm going to do one more. Paul. I, huh. Let's see. This question I feel is a little, a little something. I don't know. Paul says, did you find that the way you remembered things when compared to your siblings was shaped by the story you told yourself of your memory. Yes, yes, that's how memory works. You tell yourself a story that, so you can sleep at night, you mm -hmm. know, and what makes you feel comfortable um, that fits into the narrative that you need to be true. And we all do that. And right. um, um, it's definitely, Unfortunately, like I was saying, telling my family when we got started on, when I got started on this was like, you know, the problem is, is that I'm the first one to write the book. Right. And <laughs> so my version of it, it will become the quote unquote official version. Right. And that I felt bad about that, but they have given me their blessing and they're okay with it. Right. Hopefully it's still. They are, they love you. Sarah, I can't believe right. this. We, Sarah, we have been in conversation about we your conversation memoir. about your <laughs> memoir oh my god it, this isn't how i imagined it but <laughs> it's I'll still pretty it. damn cool it's, it's very still cool. pretty damn cool um so i will let you take it away and say yes everyone who's watching all 35 of you uh honestly not bad right not Hello. Bad. I'm, <laughs> thank god more than one um, <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this. And if you don't know Naomi, she truly is one of the funniest people oh, on the there. scene ever. I mean, just crazy funny and warm and loving. I love you so much. And I love you, dude. Um, but yeah, thank you all for, for reading the book, for buying the book. I hope you bought it. Yeah, buy it. Um, buy it. Buy it from the Strand. Thank you. Um, 18 Miles of Books, established 1927. <laughs> It's like amazing, obsessed, obsessed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, please and leave a review and tell everybody. Thank yes. you guys so much. You got to get it five stars. We love you. Five stars. Love you. <laughs> okay. I guess we're leaving now.